Hello everybody, welcome. Um, well, I want to continue doing this clip that we started the other day on making a making your own seal. Um, as you can see before me here, I've got various different sizes of lumps of clay um, that I want to carve out and make a make a seal. Now, these are just as I said before, just pieces of clay. Um, and you want to use a clay that doesn't have any grog in it and this clay doesn't have any grog or the grog that it does have is very very fine so in other words when I'm scratching out the the design um, I'm not encountering any pieces of grit or grog there because they will make it awkward for me to to be able to make the make the cut um, in fact what I want to do is I thought for the purpose of this demonstration I would do I would do it in a rather on a rather large make a rather large seal just so you can see what I'm doing um, you know with the with the uh, the way I'm cutting it and marking it so basically um, basically uh, I've marked out in pencil in the reverse in the reverse, um, in like mi mirror, mirror. I'll get that light on a bit better there. In mirror writing, as it were, my initials, which is an L, and then I've marked an S. So, if I got the mirror, not a very clean mirror, I have to say. Hang on a minute. Let's give it a clean. Give it a bit of a clean there. So I'm hoping that I hope that comes out. You can see there, you see in the mirror by putting it around that way, that's gonna give me it's gonna give me the LS that I need. Okay, so so what I propose to do is I'm going to focus in, bring down the, so you can see what I'm doing here, because I've got to do this a little bit sort of um, with a steady hand, if you know what I mean. And what I'm doing is basically marking out the basic the letter, the letters, I should say. All right, so I'm gonna, let's do that right now. I've got to bring this in so I make sure that I'm zoomed in just there at that point. So let's go, let's see if I can do it. If I can stay on that round board, I should be, we should be in focus. Hoping that that will be all right. Okay. Light is the key, of course, isn't it? I mean, making sure we've got enough light on the subject. Let me get that. Move that down there a bit. So, right, I've got to be working just in this area. So, uh, what I'm going to do is just get a sponge. I've never done this before, uh, like on a clip, so up close. It'll be interesting to see how it comes out. Um, so, now, using, using this, Now, you know, I'm finding this needle a bit bendy. Just a little bit too... If it, when, you, when you choose your needle um, to do this, you want one that has got a, a decent 
sharp point on it. So I'm going to hold it a little further down. First of all, what I've got to do is just dig a, a trough. I think I explained that on the uh, on the blackboard. I did this the other day. Of course, I'm doing this. I don't usually have a seal as big as this. This is just so you can grasp what I'm doing. Of course, being a bigger seal, I need to go, which we may, we may run out of time, but I need to go that much deeper, of course, don't I? So first of all, you see I'm cutting down, cutting down a, a vertical trough if you like. Nice sunny day today up here, but somewhat cooler than it has been. And I think we're heading though for a warm 4th of July weekend by all accounts. Okay, so I've done that one a bit. I may have to do it more. You just have to... Just keep going. Hang on, maybe I'll move myself around a touch. Now you will find when you do this that the clay, it does it may break away a bit. That's actually not not so good, but you can actually do this. You see now, if I if I got a piece of plaster of Paris, which is actually much finer, much finer grain, um, you can do this equally well or better using plaster of Paris. But you can do it out of clay as well. I'm not saying the result there is as good, I would say it's probably better out of plaster. But there's always clay around, isn't there? You don't always want to bring plaster into a studio. A little bit of it. You get plaster in your clay, which I have had. Terrible, isn't it? Uh, when I was out in Spain, I, I, I actually I used to get the clay supplied from the supplier. It used to it used to have it used to have lime already in the clay. I think they put it in on purpose. <laughs> I went down to the clay supplier with a a box load of pots with all the blowouts on them from bits of bits of bits of uh, lime in the clay so I've done the vertical cut that way and that way what I've now got to do is I've got to incline this over at that angle you see and I've got to cut out a V slot it's got to be like in the, the profile of a V That's so the clay can readily go into the seal and come out again 
it doesn't leave any clay lodged in there. Because that's a real nuisance if you get clay lodged in the seal. Um, you've got to then keep stopping and picking it out. So I've done that side, now I'm going to do this side here. I'm probably not going to get time in this clip to be able to do the S in actual fact because these things they take a little bit more time sometimes when I'm, when I'm doing a clip sometimes I find I'm running out of time so let's do this let's go down this side again on the other side you just use the the needle, the side of the needle, just to break the corner. Like that. And then this. I always find doing when I do seals, they're actually fairly forgiving. You think that you know when you're cutting a seal you think, oh dear, I made a terrible job of that. And yet, when you go to impress it in the clay, the result that it gives you is surprisingly good. Um, so. Now, it may be that, you know, I'm going to have to alter this as I go along, probably make it, I'll probably do it I'll test it in a piece of clay and then I'll think, oh yes, we need to improve it here or improve it there. You know. I love impressing clay with, with something. So what I've got there, as you can see, is the letter L, but what I want to do is give it a slight sort of serifs at the top of the letter, which is like a, a sort of tail, a wispy bit on the end. I can sort of finish it off and make it... In this case, I've left I've left the clay here. It's 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 bone dry now. Um, I've sometimes I had the notion that cutting the clay when it wasn't quite bone dry, it wasn't quite so powdery, it wasn't quite so likely to um, break away. You know when you're when you're when you're when you're carving it, because you want to get a fairly clean edge as you along here and here. So now, if you're somebody who's good at calligraphy, which I expect some of you are, you will enjoy doing this. Um, what I want to do is, of course, test this out in a piece of clay before this clip finishes, just to um, so you can see. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'm happy just down at this end here. Made a bit of a boob, a bit of a mistake down here. to hope that it's forgiving, it's forgiving to me when I press it into the clay. Okay, let's get a piece of piece of clay and 
see what it is going to come out like. All right, so I've got a piece of clay up here, I think. I'm about to throw a few jugs as well, but this clay is actually quite soft. It be softer than I would normally be trying to push into a seal. Um, let's just put that piece of, of clay in there and let's impress this into it and see what it comes out like. Okay, all right. Have another go. All right. Well, you can see there what I've done so far. In actual fact, um, I would say it needs it needs a bit more depth to it and a bit more width. Okay. but hopefully that will give you some idea about how to do it, how to go about it. All right. That's the important thing, have a go. And um, just pull back the camera. Uh, I hope that's been in focus what I didn't do. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done this, this is really, I, I did this for demonstration. Um, working on a smaller scale, on a smaller seal, you'll actually get um, quite a good result by, by using the same method. Okay, so have a go. And um, as I say, if you use plaster, uh, plaster Paris, that's very good. And probably better than this. You just have to uh, form it into something you know, these are these are useful little. I can just hold them like that in my between my finger and thumb to to impress on the bottom of a pot. And don't forget, we need to bisque fire these. All right, they need to be bisque fired, um, not a hard bisque either. Okay, so they're still absorbent. That's actually quite important. If you're using the clay, if it's plaster, you don't need to fire it, of course. Okay, all right. Simon Luke saying, keep practicing. See you soon. Bye-bye.